Welcome, Eagles, to another episode of Trad Cat Night Radio. I am Eric Kajewski, founder and owner of Trad Cat Night, the most viewed and followed traditional Catholic apostolate worldwide. This is also home to the new crusade. I want to welcome all those new to Trad Cat Night. Hopefully over the past few weeks to month, to the last month, you have been uh, listening into Trad Cat Night. You've been listening to the latest uh, section I've added on the YouTube page entitled TCK Breaking News, providing the latest daily news as it's coming to us, both from uh, the apostasy uh, in the church en route to this formal New Age religion in Rome. And then also, uh, from the secular side, paying attention to the social, economic, and political uh, areas as it relates to the New World Order. So, again, I encourage you all to visit tradcatnight.blogspot.com. Again, ladies and gentlemen, we are in an information war, and I do need your help uh, as it relates to donations. We're making some serious ground um, in terms of visibility. And we're, I'm now able to rub shoulders with more and more people in the mainstream, have some great guests coming up. Um, I actually had to reschedule the one for today. That's why I'm doing this radio show solo uh, with an issue with one of my special guests. I'm hoping to reschedule over the next few days to maybe sometime having him back on uh, next month. But this particular episode, ladies and gentlemen, I want to cover some more Catholic prophecy on a specific nun who is all but forgotten, really, uh, as it relates to Catholic prophecy. Uh, but before we get into that, we of course need to go to Our Lady and pray and ask for her intercession and ask that she spread her mantle over us. If I can add with this particular prayer, let, let us pray that priests rise up and do more Eucharistic processions, and that more and more people will take uh, the devotion to the Immaculate Heart more seriously. Wear, you know, wear the scapular, pray the rosary. Um, you know, there, there's going to be some very trying times up ahead, and it's only going to be uh, through faith and hope that we're going to make it through these times. We haven't even hit the great storm yet, the great test, and I pray that all of you do take uh, the message of Fatima seriously. If you're not Catholic, you know, I'm always open to talking to people. So send me a message at Apostle of Mary at hotmail.com for all the latest news that you have to give to me, articles, blogs you'd like to see up, videos. Send them to me at Apostle of Mary at hotmail.com so that I can get them up. And for those of you who cannot or do not want to donate uh, online for whatever reason, Send me an email at apostleofmary at hotmail.com and I will give you uh, the mailing address to wherein uh, you certainly can do it in, in, in that way. So, without any further delay, let's pray for those graces for our own souls, for our families. Uh, we pray for the souls uh, in purgatory, obviously. We want to pray for priests, prelates, the Pope, for poor sinners who are caught in addictive lifestyles. And for all of your intentions, I, I want to pray in, in, in union with you so that those uh, graces can be given unto you through the Immaculate Heart, which come from our source, the Sacred Heart. And so we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And so, ladies and gentlemen, let's, without any further delay, let's kind of get right into this. Um, you know, we have the prophecies of Sister Jeanne Le Royal, who took the religious name of Sister of the Nativity. So she's more commonly just known as Sister Jeanne of the Nativity. That's how I have always uh, announced her. Uh, so she was a French nun who received a series of apocalyptic visions in the 18th century. Uh, her visions were recorded in an 1817 book, uh, Life and the Revelations of Sister of the Nativity by Charles Gennet. And again, her, her prophecies are very striking and very telling. Again, more or less correlating with the third secret of Fatima. But there's so many Catholics 
who don't know these prophecies, and again, I've recorded them on Defeat Modernism. I've reblogged them. Before we actually uh, kind of get more into the, the, the crux of it, you know, we do have to understand that, uh, you know, there have been prophecies regarding uh, anti popes. We, we know in Catholic Church history that there have been uh, close to 50, if I'm not mistaken, off the top of my head. Um, and so we have, you know, these, these written, recorded, uh, so oftentimes visions, uh, oftentimes just, uh, you know, prophecies, suggestions by various uh, Catholics. Some were saints, some were not. But, they, you know, there's a common kind of consensus opinion that, uh, like, say, for example, Frederick Faber, who in 1863 said that many believe in a demonical incarnation you know, of the Antichrist, this will not be so, but he'll be utterly possessed. His doctrine as apparent uh, contradiction of no religion, yet a new religion. He was uh, an attending pontiff, so separating regal and prophetic voices. There have oftentimes been so many to speak of uh, this new religion is what I'm keying in at, because it's an essential piece to what Sister Jeanne uh, of the Nativity uh, says again. Most of you should know Blessed Anna Emmerich, uh, who clearly demonstrated that the church was being infiltrated uh, by the Jews through Freemasonry, where she saw that they were building this new church. Uh, she states they were building a great, str uh, strange, and extravagant church. Everyone was to be admitted into it in order to be united and to have equal rights. Evangelicals, Catholic, sects of every kind, such was to be of this new church church there was nothing holy about it and yet sadly we have people like bishop fillet who are trying to gain some kind of formal recognition in this uh, new church to be recognized as catholic when you have to remember the universalists behind vatican ii they they embrace everyone they truly do and so you don't want to be caught under that uh, construct or that umbrella you don't want to be recognized by these modernists as catholics is what i'm saying um so yves dupont in uh, kind of uh, given his little take on what Blessed Anne Emmerich has to say, uh, stated that they wanted to make a new church, a church of human manufacture, but God had other de uh, designs, you know, basically said an anti-pope shall be set up in Rome. That was on page 116 of his book. Then you have the Oba prophecy. It will come when the church authorities issue directives to support a new cult. Right? The cult of man. That happened at Vatican II. Openly. Paul VI, when priests are forbidden to celebrate in any, in any other, when the highest uh, positions in the church are given to perjurers and hypocrites, when only renegades are admitted to occupy those positions. And that's very aptly put. I was just listening to Bishop Williamson tonight, and that's, that's what he called these individuals in Rome. They are renegades. I mean, they are trying to openly destroy the church. They are hypocrites. They are heretics, ladies and gentlemen. At the very least, material heretics. We have to keep our distance from these people. Um, again, Blessed uh, Anna Maria Tiaji, at the end, uh, he will have the gift of miracles. Again, this is actually uh, talking about uh, the Pope to come, Holy Pope Peter II. Um, Blessed uh, Joachim in uh, 1202, towards the end of the world, Antichrist will overthrow the Pope and usurp the sea. And again, that's the common opinion of the early church fathers, that the Antichrist and his minions would drive away the true Pope, who in our opinion is Pope Benedict XVI. And again, from my perspective, uh, Francis is a true anti-pope who's simply going to bail out here soon and give way to this false prophet who he'll probably be a sidekick to. So I've mentioned, you know, kind of that unholy trinity between the false prophet, uh, anti-pope Francis, and then the new age false Christ coming onto the scene who will be so supported by the UN in Israel's name's Maitreya. Again, Father Kramer has covered this a lot too. We try to every once in a while make mention of this prophecy, St. Francis of Assisi, there will be an uncanonically elected pope who will cause uh, a great schism. 
there will be diver uh, there will be diverse thoughts preached which will cause many even those in different orders to doubt uh, yet even agree with those heretics which will cause uh, his order to divide speaking uh, St. Francis if not if not these days be shortened the elect would assuredly uh, be lost <clears throat> also here's a new one and again we haven't even gotten to Sister Jeanne yet I'm, I'm just kind of covering more uh, general end time prophecy this this was Pope uh, Gregory the Great uh, in the early 600s in those days concerning the end times near the end an army of priests and two thirds of the Christians will join this schism so it also correlates with another prophecy that I do not have in front of me uh, but it suggests there's a split you know I, I've said there's just going to be a, a, a split uh, here in the road you know some will follow Pope Benedict the 16th the true papacy will be fleeing up there to, to Fatima up into Portugal eventually where a new Pope will have to be elected and then according to Pope Gregory the Great he's saying two-thirds not you know not a split but it's very similar uh, you get the idea that this this schism is going to be uh, rather large and this is what we're going to get into here soon with Sister Jeanne because she speaks on this as well uh, you know so Yves DuPont who was an avid reader and collector of Catholic prophecies uh, you know s said that these prophecies are quite exact and explicit about the election uh, of an anti-pope and uh, you know many prophecies indeed do predict an anti-pope uh, and a schism um, again a lot going on here um, many of you are, are of course aware of Malachi's uh, prophecies which I think many people uh, misinterpret because uh, Peter too is actually going to be a good Pope you see this misinterpreted a lot you know Peter Romanus you know he's the bad Pope some people are saying Francis is Peter Romanus well no that's not the case because Francis is not even the real Pope if he's not the real Pope then he can't be Peter Romanus Peter Romanus Peter or Peter too as I call him will be a good Pope that will take us help take us through this great test uh, soon to come so kind of getting that out of the way more general end time prophecy getting back into sister Jeanne and I'll just try to take it maybe a few lines at a time and then we'll just try to break it down but again this is uh, uh, an individual a sister a nun who is often overlooked many of us uh, concentrate on blessed Anna Emmerich obviously uh, detailing this Vatican II apostasy this Judeo Freemasonic infiltration but and then also Marie Julie Jehenny of course who along the same lines exposed it exposed uh, the Jews being behind it uh, using Freemasonry but again she's very she's very important she's an intricate part uh, to this puzzle in terms of the consensus of prophecy in our time and again we cannot overlook the consensus of prophecy which all say the same thing infiltration of the church through Jews through Freemasonry set up the one world religion under a false prophet who is the aid if you will to the new age Antichrist who will set up shop in Jerusalem that's the flow so she goes on to say we'll start with this she goes on to say you know one day I heard a vo voice which said the new constitution will appear to many other than what it really is they will bless it as a gift from heaven whereas it is in fact sent from hell and permitted by God and his just wrath it will only be by its effects that the people will be led to recognize the dragon who wanted to destroy and devour all now what's interesting to note I would say uh, most individuals who study prophecy seriously would correlate this particular line to Vatican II but just recently we had uh, the latest apostolic exhortation of Francis in which which was coming out of Rome this is not my take on it which came out of Rome and the La Observata Romano they were calling it a new constitution for the family Okay, and we know from Sister Lucia that the final battle between the Lord and the reign of Satan would be about marriage and the family. But she, uh, you know, obviously stated, don't be afraid because anyone who works for the sanctity of marriage and the family will always uh, be fought and opposed in every way because this is the decisive issue. However, of course, Our Lady has already 
crushed its head. So some interesting language and verbiage, which you know, kind of builds off of the Second Vatican Council. And of course, Catholics must reject Vatican II. Catholics must reject uh, what anti uh, what anti Pope Francis is dishing out to the masses. It's only going to eventually condemn your soul. Uh, so very interesting, you know, this first particular aspect. Continuing on, she states, one night I saw a number of ecclesiastics. Their haughtiness and air of severity seemed to demand the respect of all. They forced the faithful to follow them, but God commanded me to oppose them. I will say that again. God commanded me to oppose them. They will no, no longer have the right to speak in my name. Jesus told me it is against my wish that they carry out a mandate for which they no, uh, no longer are worthy of. You know, what have we been doing in the resistance since Vatican II and all of these disastrous popes that we have had? Resistance, ladies and gentlemen. This is what the Catholic Church has always taught. And this was the plan of the enemy, to infiltrate the Catholic Church, to teach uh, their new uh, religion, to teach Freemasonry, to basically invert everything, make everything at the top, so to speak, Protestant, and then have the real Catholics viewed as heretics and schismatics outside of the church. And I got news for you, ladies and gentlemen. Once the formal New Age religion comes, do not be surprised to see them send, the, you know, the henchmen to, uh, you know, the uh, the UN after us, their task force. I mean, we're going to be labeled. We're already labeled as terrorists and extremists, but I mean, they're going to come after us. There's, there's no question about it. So we are going to have to resist. I mean, obviously we're resisting doctrinally, but I mean literally resist for our, with our lives to take defense. So we must oppose them. We must oppose these modernists of Vatican II. We can't follow them. They're very much prideful, as Pope St. Pius X pointed out in his works, that is the root cause of modernism, as Archbishop Lefebvre pointed out. They are indeed agents of the Antichrist. They are forerunners of the Antichrist. Now, continuing on, she said, because there's quite a lot to get through here. I saw a great power rise up in the church. It plundered, devastated, threw into confusion and disorder the vineyard of the Lord, having it trampled underfoot by the people and holding it up to ridicule by all nations having vilified celibacy and oppressed the priesthood, it had the effrontery to confiscate the church's property and to arrogate it for itself, uh, the, po the powers of the Holy Father whose persons and laws were held in contempt. So we see, <clears throat> you know, the coming uh, further attack on celibacy. You know, don't be surprised to see women, quote unquote, priests. These socialists, they'll come after property, not only the church's property. You see the, the Novus Ordo churches being sold off. You see them being sold off to mosques. That's not by any surprise. Again, the trend, ladies and gentlemen, is not buildings. It's, it's fortify your house, as Bishop Williamson says. Make, make, make your home a fortress. That, that's, that's the trend. That's where we're going. It's not actual buildings. Uh, so very, very interesting take there. Now she says, I had a vision. Before the Father and the Son, both seated, a virgin of incomparable beauty representing the church was kneeling. The Holy Ghost spread his wings over the virgin <coughs> and two other persons. The wounds of our Lord seemed alive. Leaning on the cross with one hand, he offered to his Father, with the other hand a chalice which the virgin had given to him. She supported the chalice which the Master had held in the middle. The Father placed one hand on one cup and raised the other to bless the virgin, I noticed that the chalice was only half filled with blood, and I heard these words spoken by the Savior at the moment of presentation. I shall not be fully satisfied until I am able to fill it right up to the brim. I understood then the contents of the chalice was only uh, half filled with blood of the early martyrs, and that this vision had a reference to the last persecution of Christians whose blood would fill the chalice, thereby completing the number of martyrs predestined. For at the end of time there will be as many martyrs as in the early church, and even more, for the persecutions will be far more violent. Then the last judgment will no longer be delayed. Ladies and gentlemen, the persecutions coming will be far more violent than the early church, and you know how horrendous those were. Think about Peter being crucified upside down. Think about uh, the beheadings. Think about uh, individuals being <coughs> thrown 
to the lions burnt alive you know how it is and and basically when you study end time prophecy by the way there's a reason why they have all these guillotines set up is that's the main way they're going to kill off christians or, or terrorists of the state is actually through the guillotines and they are already here in the united states by the way uh and so and that by the way can be found in the book of revelation that's just not that's not my opinion i've actually covered that in a blog and demonstrated that to you all so Continuing on, I see in God that a long time before the rise of the Antichrist, the world will be afflicted with many bloody wars. People will rise up against peoples and nations, uh, will rise up against nations, some allied, sometimes enemies in their fight against the same party. Armies will come into frightful collisions and will fill the earth with murder and carnage. These infernal and foreign wars will cause enormous sacrifices, profanations, scandals and infinite evils because of the incursions that will have been made into the church again more reference of the church uh concerning uh you know incursions we already have been seeing this now for quite some time uh in terms of revolutions in terms of the world war the world wars building um and so again fits perfectly with scripture, fits perfectly with other Catholic prophecy, but she goes on even more. As well as that, I can see that the earth will be shaken in different places by frightful earthquakes. I just covered that tonight. Earthquakes in diverse places, our Lord say. Now this is where it gets pretty eerie. I see whole mountains cracking and splitting with a terrible din. Only too happy will be one if they can escape with no more than a fight, but I... But no, I see come out of these gaping mountains whirlwinds of smoke, fire, and sulfur and tar, which reduce to cinders entire towns. All of this and a thousand other da disasters must come before the man of sin. Ladies and gentlemen, that's already happening in various countries. Uh, not only ma are mountains cracking, just the, the grounds themselves are cracking, methane, s smoke uh, I think out even in Los Angeles, they're having a methane problem. Uh, this is actually pretty common out there in the Middle East. You know, bubbling sand. I mean, it's going to get far worse. Now, I mean, think about entire towns being reduced to rubble uh, over what is going to come out of the ground. Uh, pretty interesting take because we already see the early signs of that right now. That's why I put... Uh, a related blog out there on a monthly basis uh, demonstrating to this, showing you videos of these. Now continuing on again because there is a lot to this ladies and gentlemen so I apologize if I'm moving a little bit fast I want to try to get through this in about an hour, uh, in an hour and a half. I saw in the light of the Lord that the faith of our holy religion would become weaker in almost every Christian kingdom God has permitted that they should be chastised by the wicked in order to awaken them from their apathy what are we dealing with right now these wicked modernists right people that Bishop Filet are trying to make agreements and being recognized by they are the enemies of our Lord Jesus Christ as bad as that sound Francis is an enemy of, of Christ Vatican to itself and its erroneous doctrines, its new way, its new doctrines, the new humanism, the new mass, the new, 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 new evangelization, new theology. It's not from Jesus. It's not ours. We have to arrive at that conclusion if we're going to understand what the next step in this process is, which is the formalized one world religion. So he's, God's trying to wake us up from our apathy, ladies and gentlemen. People are lax. They're lukewarm. They fell asleep, so to speak during Vatican II, and they just went along and they didn't protest like Archbishop Lefebvre did, and a few others. And after the justice of God has been satisfied, he will spread the faith and restore the discipline of the church in those countries where it has become tepid and lax. And again, this actually correlates with Matthew 24, where our Lord says, basically, after all of the chastisements, uh, that once again, lands would be evangelized, uh, the faith would be preached, and that's going to be what partly we're going to have to do in Order of the Eagle is to go back out and spread the true faith all over the earth and in all over the lands. Continuing on, I saw in God that our Holy Mother Church will spread in many countries and produce her fruits in abundance to compensate for the outrages she has suffered from impiety and persecutions. I saw the poor people weary of the arduous labors and trials that God sent them 
uh, shall be thrilled with the joy that God will infuse in their good hearts. The church will become by her faith and by her love more fervent and flourishing than ever. Our good mother, the church, will witness many amazing things, even on the part of her former persecutors, for they will come forwards and throw themselves at her feet, acknowledge her, and implore pardon from God and for all of the crimes and outrages that they had perpetrated against her. <clears throat> she will no longer regard them as her enemies, but she will instead welcome them as their own children. So we see the enemies of, of, of God, to a certain degree, repenting and coming back to the church. She continues on. Now, all of the true penitents will flow from all sides of the church, which which the church shall receive them into her bosom. The entire community of the faithful will pour out their hearts in hymns of penance and thanksgiving and give glory to God. I saw in God's essence a numerous assembly of ministers of the church who like an army in battle and like a firm and unflinching column shall sustain the rights of the church and her head shall restore its ancient discipline. Again, restoring the church, restoring the discipline giving rights back to the church, not the Freemasonic rights to man. Continuing on, I see in God a great power led by the Holy Ghost, which will restore order through a second upheaval. I see in God a large assembly of pastors who uphold the rights of the church and her head. They will restore the former dis disciplines. I see in particular two servants of the Lord who will distinguish themselves in this glorious struggle and who by the grace of the Holy Ghost with will fill with ardent zeal the hearts of the illustrious assembly. So we have here a good number of people who will actually be a part of this counter-revolution. And we see uh, the beginnings of that, I think, right now. More and more people are, are uh, arriving and understanding that truly it is uh, Freemasonry <laughs> that is uh, behind uh, all of the nonsense. And uh, we have to continue to pray for more and more uh, individuals to uh, awaken assuredly so continuing on all of the false cults will be abolished all of the abuses of the revolution will be destroyed and the altars of the true God restored the former practices will be, be put into force again and our religion in, in at least in some respects will flourish more than ever again false cults. What are we talking about here? Well, of course, going back to the French Revolution, but Vatican II is the French Revolution in the Catholic Church. It is the cult of man, as Paul VI called it. This will be abolished. You will notice how I say abolished. Not the pseudo-traditionalists, the ICKs, the FSSPs, the new SXPX now, who are trying to look for some kind of re-clarification on Vatican II and tap dancing and pussyfooting around. No. That's not true resistance. That's not being a true counter-revolutionary. This cult will be abolished, made null and void. Vatican II is not a work of the church. And the true altars be restored. They, they decimated our altars. I mean, in a literal sense, uh, but also in a mystical sense, uh, <coughs> uh, by putting in the illicit and schismatic uh, new mass. Now, continuing on, I see in God that the church will enjoy pro a profound peace over a period which seems to be uh, a decent uh, amount of time. Uh, this respite will be uh, the longest of all that will occur between the revolutions from now until the general judgment. The closer we draw to the general judgment, the shorter will be the revolutions against the church. Now that's key to understanding uh, because this it falls in line with other Catholic prophecy which suge suggests that this period of peace coming up is only going to be a generation, and I'll cover this in my own book. Uh, you know, it was written in La Salette, 25 years of bountiful harvest. Our Lord said in Matthew 24, and this generation, uh, you know, shall see the consummation, uh, you know, you know, shall see my, the consummation of the world. So it's a generation, 20, 25 to 40 years, most genealogists put it at. Uh, so, yeah, that's a, a roundabout. It's, it's going to be a shorter period of revolution. Now, continuing on, um, this is so because we are approaching the end of time, she says, and a little time will be left for either the elect to do good 
or for the wicked to do evil. One day the Lord said to me a few years before the coming of my enemy, Satan will rise up false prophets who will announce the Antichrist as the true Messiah, and they will destroy it, all of our Christian beliefs. And I shall make the children and the old people prophesy. The closer we get to the reign of the Antichrist, the more will darkness the darkness of Satan spread over the earth and the more of his satellites, his agents. These are the modernists we're talking about at Vatican II. They will increase their efforts to trap the faithful in their nets. Why, pe why people can't see this? Why can't they see this? They're, they're being trapped into this new church being constructed at the Second Vatican Council. Continuing on. One day I found myself in a vast plain alone with God. Jesus appeared to me. And from the top of a small hill, showing me a beautiful sun on the horizon, he said dolefully, The world is passing away, and the time of my coming draws near. When the sun is about to set, one knows that the day is nearly over, and that the night will soon fall. Centuries are like days for me. Look at the sun and see how much it still has to travel, and estimate that time is, uh, what time is left in the world. I looked intently, and it seemed to me that the sun would set in about two hours. Jesus said, do not forget that those are not uh, millenaries, but only centuries, and they are few in number. But I understood that Jesus reserved to himself the knowledge of the exact number, and I did not wish to ask him more. It sufficed me to know the peace of the church and the restoration uh, of the discipline uh, was a decent amount of time. And again, a generation is you know it's still a decent amount of time it's not a year or two it's not five years it's not even a decade i mean a, a generation is a decent amount of time uh she also made note that the holy father is most unhappy because of him the whole uh church is in desolation <clears throat> i would say you know we would argue again that pope benedict the 16th is the true pope we believe that a lot of these conservative cardinals would actually hold that hold to that position. As a matter of fact, more and more people have come to me who actually attend some of these pseudo trad chapels. And again, you know, I, I ask them why they're there. Uh, you know, they continue to do so, but they actually have been telling me as of late that there's a good number of them who, who actually will privately hold that Benedict XVI is the true Pope. So it's, it's a lot more common than people think. It's just, I don't think it's vocalized yet. I think they're waiting for the big trip up, if you will. Uh, but I, it's coming more and more common. So, Sister Jean of the Nativity continues on. Many precursors, false prophets, and members of the infernal secret societies, worshippers of Satan's, shall impugn the most sacred dogmas and doctrines of our holy religion, shall persecute the faithful, shall commit abominable actions, but the real and extreme abomination and desolation shall more fully be accomplished during the reign of the Antichrist, uh, which will last about three and a half years so this is kind of interesting i know a lot of people you know kind of say the abomination of desolation the new mass it, it really doesn't have a reference to that i mean i'm not going to sit here and waste time with people who say that mostly say to the contest but the abomination in, uh, of de and desolation uh actually is a reference to the image of maitreya uh, it the, and and i referenced that actually to the early fathers of the church saint john Chrys chrysostom was one uh, and there were others, but that was basically the more common and pious opinion that it, was, it would be an image that would be set up. Now, some of these images are actually being put up in Novus Ordo chapels, not here in the West, but I know people in Nigeria and other places uh, in Africa, some in Latin America, South America, uh, Europe, not so much. But these images are already going up. I mean, people who think that's a joke, I mean, look at some of these pastors who who have been setting up uh, globes in the church and they're now singing hymns to mother God. listen ladies and gentlemen I get emails a lot it's happening a lot more than you think especially in Canada uh, where this is taking place so it's it's this is all precursor uh, to what we've been talking about now she goes on to say woe woe to the last century which is descending what tribulation precede its commencements out of this mighty voice, I recognize that these woeful tribulations will make their appearance in the age before judgment. And as I pondered over and weighed in God, the century I saw, that which begins with 1800, will not yet be the last. I see that when the second coming of Christ approaches, a bad priest will do harm to the church. 
Now, I think many would correlate that with St. Francis's uh, prediction of uh, of the destroyer, if you will. Um, now she goes on to say, when the time of the reign of the Antichrist is near, listen to this, a false religion will appear which will be opposed to the unity of God and his church. What false religion are we talking about? The Vatican II Novus Ordo religion. Striking. So when the reign of the Antichrist is near, a false religion will appear. Ladies and gentlemen, this is in Scripture. 1 Thessalonians 2, 4. The Great Revolt. Revolt in the Church, the Catholic Church, the, the, the Second Vatican Council, which Archbishop Lefebvre clearly uh, demonstrated in his works that this was a revolution. We even had cardinals. I think it was Cardinal Sunans who came out. Yeah, this was the French Revolution in the Church. Interesting, very interesting. She points it out, the cult of man. Uh, and so we can't have nothing to do with that as Catholics. She goes, now, now, now get this, this will cause the greatest schism that the world has ever known. And again, we, we would argue we're in a silent schism right now because none of what has been taught since Vatican II that opposes tradition actually would come uh, through the solemn magisterium. Again, we have to differentiate between uh, the ordinary uh, infallible and actually the, the ordinary authentic. So all these errors and heresies uh, simply come by wayward churchmen, not on the account of the church. That's where Sato Acontis uh, actually would go wrong. But, I mean, that formal schism is coming where, uh, you know, this false prophet, probably with the, the help of anti-Pope Francis, he'll, pro he'll probably be off to the side maybe a little bit because, you know, he's going to quote-unquote resign. And uh, he, he will make an invalid ex cathedra uniting all humanity, uniting all religions. And, of course, he's uh, a fraud. And, of course, this will cause the greatest schism. And, and people will go along with that. People are actually going to side with him. Um, <clears throat> errors will cause ravages as never before. The, the nearer the time of the end, the more the darkness of Satan will spread all over the earth. The greater will be the number of the children of corruption and the number of the just will corresponding, correspondingly diminish. Again, this only goes to show what our Lord said in the, in the gospel, Luke 18, 8. Think ye when the Son of Man cometh, will he find faith. The church is going to be small again. Don't let any pseudo-traditionalists tell you otherwise. We're going to be small in relation to the New Age religion, at least for a shorter period of time. Now, continuing on, she has uh, so so much to speak about. Um, Fifteen days after the ascension of Enoch, uh, and Eli is into heaven. Terrible catastrophes will come upon the earth. Most severe earthquakes, tidal waves, inundating much of the earth's surface, culminating a thick darkness over the entire earth. And again, uh, Enoch and uh, Eli, uh, the two witnesses, again, will preach to the Jews. The Jews will convert. Uh, continuing on, uh, my father, God, has manifested to me the malice of Satan and the perverse and diabolical intentions of his agents against the Holy Church of Jesus Christ. At the command of their master, these wicked men have traversed the earth like furies and with the intention of preparing the way and place for the Antichrist whose reign is approaching. Do we get that, ladies and gentlemen? The, the people now who are entrenched in the Vatican, they do not have good intentions. They are not just making silly mistakes. This is a plan in place to get the false prophet in place, who the false prophet, in return, is preparing the way for the New Age uh, Antichrist, whose name is Maitreya. That's it. We have to come to that conclusion. <clears throat> we have to quit burying our heads in the sand and just think it's not as bad as what it really is it is so get over it and get prepared that's really what we have to do uh now she continues on here again a lot of great detail um through the corrupted breath of his proud spirit they have poisoned the minds of men like persons infected with pestilence they have reciprocally communicated the evil to each other and the contagion has become general what convulsions what scandals the thick vapors which i have seen rising from the earth and obscuring 
the light of the sun are the false maxims of irreligion and of a license which in part originated in France and in part came to us from abroad. You see that? False maxims. <clears throat> Again, the revolution. Freemasonry. And now we have that coming from the Vatican. Interesting uh, how she points out, you know, the, these rising vapors obscuring uh, the light of the sun. We can make an analogy there with a Salette with the eclipse of the sun. The church will be uh, in, in eclipse. You know, it's still there, but it's kind of hiding. It's not visible. The church will be uh, small, uh, which Pope Benedict the Sixteenth, by the way, said in his memoirs. The church would become small and essentially have to start over. Um, continuing on, these have succeeded in confounding all sound principles and in spreading everywhere uh, such a darkness as to obscure the light both of faith and reason. Both of faith and reason. The storm began in France, and France shall be the first theater of its ravages after having been its forge. But the church in council, here we go, this is the great part. This is the great part. No reclarification coming. Are you listening, pseudo tried? There's no reclarification coming on Vatican II. But the church and council assembled one day shall strike down with anathemas, pull down and destroy the evil principles of that criminal constitution. Again, Vatican II is no more, truly no more different than the Synod of Pistoia, which was struck down, made anathema, null and void. Same thing's going to happen to Vatican II. I saw in God's essence a numerous assembly of ministers of the church who, like an army in battle array and like a firm and unflinching, unflinching column, shall sustain the rights of the church and of their head and shall reestablish its ancient discipline. Now, she's mentioned that a few times now. What a consolation. What joy for all the truly faithful. I saw in the divinity a great power guided by the Holy Ghost, which shall destroy all of the abuses of the revolution. Re religions shall be abolished. Protestantism. The altar shall be reestablished, and religion, the true religion, shall flourish more than ever. The triumph of the Immaculate Heart. When the persecution against the church has spread like a wild raging fire, even to the place where it thought, there was no danger, then the Lord, who knows how to draw glory out of everything, will suddenly command the mighty four stream and Satan to halt. Then the universe, the true universal peace will be proclaimed. Now that's profound right there, that last statement. You know, when the, when the persecution against the church has spread like a, a wild raging fire, even to the place where we thought there was no danger, right? The Vatican. Who would have thought that it would hit the highest portions of the church which is in essence the real third secret cardinal chiappi cardinal odi cardinal ottaviani all said the same thing starts at the top it's a mass deception a mass apostasy and here we have sister gian of the nativity pointing this out she's pointed out in great details again the apostasy in the church but also the triumph of the immaculate heart she's also talked about uh, the material chastisements, uh, of course, not mentioning Planet X, but it's it's kind of an indirect uh, implication uh, once again. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we have uh, another Catholic mystic here who is sadly overlooked. Again, I, I recommend uh, you all read Yves Dupont, Catholic Pro Prophecy. I wanted to get this into, uh, you know, into MP3 and into a video format because I've done uh, blogs on this, but there's just so many people who don't, uh, that have not seen these prophecies yet. And I was just speaking with Father Kramer the other day. I, th I think he's working uh, in part on his in, in his new book on these particular prophecies because we're on we're on the verge of that formal schism. Uh, and uh, it's very, very important for people to understand how the consensus of Catholic prophecy, how it all indicates this formal schism. It all indicates this uh, push, this push to push people into the new age. And so that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to call out uh, these modernists, which is our right, which is our duty, 
and that's where we're at today true resistance true resistance is a rejection of Vatican II true resistance is a true rejection of the new mass uh, obviously we cannot accept as Catholics the modernists uh, canonizations that will be dealt with at that uh, great council again this great council to come will actually be greater than Trent okay uh, who knows how long it will last uh, it obviously won't be a few years this will come after the great chastisements but one of the things that will bind us in terms of dogma will be uh, <clears throat> that fifth Marian dogma uh, Mary being uh, the mediatrix of all graces, co-redemptrix. I feel sorry for people like the Diamond Brothers who teach against that. I mean, they're already outside the church because they're Feniites, but I've seen a, a few supposed debates with them where he actually argues against that. Well, outside the church. I mean, he's still out. Objectively speaking, they are outside the church right now, but they're going to continue to remain outside the church on the basis uh, of that one uh, particular area. So, again... I'll try to do this from time to time. What I want to do going forward, actually, so everyone knows, is, <clears throat> you know, we cover prophecy a lot, but I want to try to get more into encyclicals, you know, breaking down things uh, on the theological level, because uh, I think it's really important to, to start covering those areas for what's, you know, what's about to transpire. Um, again, I can also offer my time to those who are interested in more uh, brief talks via the phone. Uh, for those who are interested, you can contact me at apostleofmary at, hot, at hotmail.com so I can answer your questions. But again, spend time on the blog. Listen, there's almost 3,000 blogs now. Uh, and a vast majority of them will probably be covering you know, traditional Catholic apologetics. So make sure you're spending time. Go down along that right-hand side of Trad Cat Night and you're going to see the blog broken down by uh, months and, and then years. I mean, you could spend a full week in there getting through all of the blogs. And that's why I have them saved for you. Now, if you're looking for a special subject, if you're looking for Catholic prophecy, what you can do is go to Google, type in Trad Cat Night, the first word, you know, always. And then just whatever you're searching, whether it's Catholic prophecy. If you're looking for anti-pope, type, type in Trad Cat Night anti-pope and this will generate you know the top five or ten articles and that's how you can do your search I'm trying to give you some some pointers here uh, so we actually made good on time here again I will leave this in the description box the actual prophecies so you can see them um, and I encourage you all to subscribe to Tradcat Night on YouTube so that you can get caught up on all the latest daily news that's coming uh, in relation to the apostasy in the church as we head closer to uh, this false prophet arri arriving on the scene, which may very well come this summer. It could happen. Francis, anti-Pope Francis could quote-unquote resign and bail out in Argentina this summer. If that does happen, look out, because we got some serious events coming. Um, so, yes, let's stay uh, with the basics here, ladies and gentlemen. Let's Let's keep our wings spread in faith and hope. Let's continue to uh, pray for one another. Very confusing times. You know, oftentimes people look at us and and they think, you know, we want nothing to do with the, the world and we kind of just want to hide in the closet. And that, that's not the case. I, again, I put myself out there for anyone uh, simply because I won't uh, go to, you know, Sunday Mass with the modernists with any building teaching Vatican II or saying the new mass doesn't mean that I'm not open to talking to people, uh, giving talks uh, on the local level with communities, again, Skyping, talking on the phone. I try to make myself as accessible as possible. So um, I do in return hope that you all uh, appreciate a lot of the content on Trad Cat Night, you know, Trad Cat Night Radio, a lot of <coughs> um, YouTube channels and websites they'll actually charge you know, a, a monthly fee so you can even get at all of these radio shows. And again, I just simply ask you and Charity to keep funding us, not only so we can keep doing what we're doing, but to actually progress, to keep moving more in the mainstream. And so that's what I ask you all to consider, especially those who, who've been around a month or two and you see what we're all about. You see how we're trying to maintain what Archbishop Lefebvre truly taught and held, not what the Neo SXPX is trying to pass off and, and think, you know, it's, it's reasonable or prudent to uh, now put your hands 
to put yourself in the hands of the monarchs, which he said was suicidal. He said it's delusional. And Bishop Filet thinks otherwise. He's, he's got his own MO and his own way of doing it. And so I hope you all can appreciate that that's simply what we're trying to do. And so until next time, ladies and gentlemen, uh, please continue to keep me in prayer. I will keep you in prayer. And uh, I will actually be on a few more radio shows, I think. So if you have special guests before we go, uh, send them to me at apostleofmaryhotmail.com and I'll try to get them on. Um, but then also, if you if you find radio shows or, or websites that you think that would be good for us to go on and bring our content to them, also contact me because I've been doing that as of late too, spreading my wings a little bit and uh, you know, recently, uh, you know, on Caravan to Midnight, Kev, Kevin Baker's show, to name a few, some, some, you know, reputable and very listened to uh, channels. And so I think it's very, very important that we go out there now and make sure everyone knows that, you know, real Catholics are not duped uh, by what's going on, by this apostasy in the church. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we shall conclude with a prayer to Our Lady and we will ask her specifically if she can watch over those who are struggling with addictions. Those who are trying to break free from pornography. Those who are trying to break free from the self. Uh, you know, sometimes, you know, these attachments, they, they, they're there and people don't recognize them. You know, I know some girls that got like 75 pairs of shoes and, you know, that's just as bad in all honesty as some of these other uh, attachments. It, it, it's, it's unhealthy, ladies and gentlemen. You don't need 75 pairs of shoes. Uh, one pair of shoes, fine. Uh, and quite honestly, you really don't even need a pair of shoes. Um, if, if it came to that. Because uh, I suggest to you that in the times ahead, um, it, it's it's going to get pretty rough, ladies and gentlemen. Take a look at what's happening in Venezuela. That's going to be reality coming here to America. There's no question about it. We're going to be hit worse. You want to know why? Because Americans are highly materialistic. We're worse, we're, we're worse than the Venezuela and these other European countries because we are, in my opinion, the most materialistic. So we've built up ourselves on that platform right and once that thing is is taken out from underneath our feet you're going to have the rich you're going to have people who have you know who, who need all of this attention on them who basically rely upon materials and money and mammon they're going to kill themselves they're going to commit suicide it's going to be madness here at every level um so that's why we have to continue to pray for that protection and so that's why we pray right now Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, Ave Maria.